In this video we'll delve into the truth concerning the Bible, and we'll expose the lie that the Bible only contains 66 books. We'll also talk about the new Bible translations and the reason why you should avoid reading them. A lot of persons are confused as to how much books are in the Bible. Gino Jennings clears up this confusion by answering questions about the many books the Catholics removed out of the Bible. All right, question. Come on, my sister. I just had a question. What Bible are you reading from? Huh? Not Ecclesiastes, but Ecclesiastes. There's books. many. The mistake that people have made, they thought it was just 66 books in the Bible. Mm -hmm. It is more than 66 books in the Bible. That's right. In your 66 books, let me show you in your Bible where the Bible talks about other books. In the book of Numbers, chapter 21, I read verse 14. Follow me. Wherefore it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord. Did it say in the book of the war of the Lord? What he did in the Red Sea. Now, everything that was done in the Red Sea is not just written in Exodus That's right. or in the Old Testament. That's right. It's also written in the book of the war of the Lord. What he did in the Red what Sea. What he did in the Red Sea. And in the brooks of Arnon. And also, and, and where? In the brooks of Arnon. And in the brooks of Arnon. All right. Now in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 12. Follow me. And we're at verse 15. Yes. Now the acts of Re Rehoboam. Now the acts of Rehoboam. First and last. First and last. Are they not written in the book of Shemaiah the prophet? Uh oh it's written in the book of Shemaiah the prophet. And y'all never heard this before. That's right. And and of Ido the seer. Oh, it's also written in the book of Ido the seer. Concerning genealogy. Concerning genealogy. And there were wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. Yes, keep traveling. Now in the book of First Chronicles, chapter Follow? twenty-nine. Listen at this. First Chronicles, chapter twenty-nine, and verse twenty-nine. First Chronicles, chapter twenty-nine, and verse twenty-nine. And verse twenty-nine. Now the acts of David the king, first and last. The acts of David the king, first and last. Behold, they are written. They are written in the book of Samuel the seer. They, we we know about Samuel the seer, don't we? That's right. What else? And, and in the book of Nathan the prophet. Oh, you knew about the prophet Nathan, mm -hmm. but did you know Nathan wrote a book? That's right. <laughs> That's right. What else? And, and in the book of Gad the seer. Oh, you knew that Jacob had a son named Gad. That's where the, that's where the Gadites come from. That's right. But did you know Gad wrote a book? That's right. You got the book of Gad. And the book of 2 Samuel chapter 1. 2 Samuel chapter 1. And we started at verse 17. All right. And David lamented with lamentation over Saul. David cried over Saul. And over Jonathan his and son. And over Jonathan his son. Also he bade them, he also he bade them teach. The children of Judah, the use of the bow. Yeah. Behold, it is written. It is written. In the book of Jasher. In the book of Jasher. We have the book of Jasher. That's right. There are so many folk who's ignorant <laughs> of their religious history. I have an old Bible here. and It was given to me many years ago. I was in my early teens. And it was probably copyrighted or printed back maybe 1805, something like that. And as you can see, it's a very old Bible. But all the books is in here. Yeah. The camera can zoom on this old Bible that's falling apart. <laughs> There's a book here that is not Ecclesiastes, but it's Ecclesiasticus, mm -hmm. which is also known as the book of Sarich. As you turn the page, you also see in this Bible, the book that is entitled The Wisdom of Solomon. Amen. So we didn't come up with no new books. No, no, no. I wasn't born in 18-something. <laughs> Viewers, you don't know the history of the Catholic Church. They took it upon themselves to take books out of the Bible. Right. And they gave you 66. Right. God didn't give you 66 because in, within the 66, there's other books mentioned. That's right. That's right. So I know God didn't give you 66. That's right. Many persons have become accustomed to the 66 books that they grew up on, so when they hear about about other books they either become curious or doubtful. The scripture says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Once we can find evidence of these books in the scriptures and they don't contradict what is written then we must accept that it is the word of God. Ecclesiasticus Wisdom of Solomon, Tobit, Bell and the Dragon, 1st and 2nd Maccabees, Judith, Baruch, 1st and 2nd Esdras, Prayer of Manasseh, Susanna and the Epistle of Jeremy are all inspired by God for our learning. We have to thank God for preserving the words He wants us to know. The Geneva Bible was the first Bible in English to divide the Scripture into numbers and verses. 
It was the most widely used Bible in the 16th and 17th century and was put together 61 years before the King James Bible. It was put together by religious leaders exiled from England to Geneva, Switzerland. This Bible contains 80 books of the Bible within the Old Testament, Apocrypha and New the Testament. This Bible was the first to be brought to America. The Geneva Bible was the most popular Bible used even after the publication of the King James Bible but in frustration to this, King James outlawed the Geneva Bible and made it illegal. As time passes, though the King James Version does not include the Apocrypha, it is still one of the most accurate Bible translations, so it became the most widely used Bible until newer versions started popping up. Let us compare scriptures in some of these new translation version with the King James Version. What I will be sharing with you are Bible verses that has been removed, or words that has been changed to mean something else other than what God intended. At the end of this video we should know what versions to avoid reading. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? In the New International Version, the NIV, it says, Why do you ask me about what is good? The New American Standard, and the New World Translation, also says the same. In Matthew chapter 9 and verse 13, it says, For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. All the other Bibles have omitted the word repentance. In Luke chapter 4 and verse 4, the scripture says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. The NIV has changed the word shall, to the word does. And along with the other versions, have changed the word by, to the word on. The part that says, but by every word of God, has been omitted out of the Bible. In Luke chapter 4 and verse 8, the scripture says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me Satan. This entire verse, has been omitted out of the other Bibles. John chapter 6 and verse 47 says, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. The words, on me, has been omitted from all the other versions. In the book of Acts chapter 23 and verse 9, the scripture says, let us not fight against God. This was also omitted from all the other version. Take a look at these other scriptures, pay attention to the highlighted words. You see, the persons who translate these Bibles know exactly what they are doing. They purposefully take away from the Word of God, or they insert different words which is used to cast doubts rather than the actual word that is written which teaches us faith. For example, when the angel appeared unto Mary, and told her that she shall conceive and bring forth a son, Mary asked the angel, How shall this be, seeing that she know not a man? Mary uses the word shall, because she believes that it will happen, she just didn't know in what way, because she knows that in order for her to bring forth a child, she has to be with a man, and she was a virgin. The angel then tells Mary how it will happen, the scripture says. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. In the New Living Translation, Mary asked the angel, But how can this happen, I am a virgin. What they did was replace the word shall, with can, and what this does is make it seems as if Mary doubted the angel, and that it was unlikely for it to happen. So, if I say to you, a certain thing shall happen, the word shall, is me believing, and having faith that it will come to pass. But if I say, a certain thing can happen that's me being unsure, or doubtful, and that is the danger of these Bibles, that are changing what is already written. So, these new Bible versions should be avoided altogether. It is the devil's way of ensuring that we don't get the true Word of God. When we have an understanding of the Bible and how we received it, it becomes clear why it holds the key to life, we should be willing to give up everything to obey what it says, most of all, we should come to the understanding of why the Bible alone is our guide to God and the compass to eternal life in Him. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I do pray that we all continue in striving to please God. If you have not yet subscribed, please remember to do so, and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when new videos are uploaded. Thanks for watching.